All right, so we're gonna get started with the beef. We have three and a half pounds of chuck that's been cut into various sizes. And then we have some flour. The amount isn't terribly important. Some salt and pepper. And what we're doing is just creating a, a sort of seasoned flour. And what we wanna do is turn on the heat, add some olive oil to the pan, and keep that handy because you, you will probably have to add a little more as we go. And this is really quite simple. All you're going to do is take that beef and dust it lightly, okay, about, about like that, shake off the excess. And uh, the pan isn't quite hot yet, but you'll get the idea. All right, so now that we have this going, you can see that I'm not overcrowding the pan. And we just want to brown this meat a little bit. Just turn the individual pieces. If you try to put too much meat in here at, at once, it'll boil instead of brown. So you want to keep the pan at about medium to medium high, because basically we're searing it. Now that you're done with the meat, add some olive oil to the pan and about eight cloves of minced garlic. Saute that for only about a minute because we don't want to burn that fond that is formed on the bottom of the pan. You see that? We want to scrape that up later and let it melt into the rest of the broth. Next, add the beef back to the pan along with all the accumulated juices. Pour in four cups of beef broth. I had one carton left over in the cupboard, which is fine because the rest will be made with water and granulated bouillon, and that'll be later on in the recipe. Add two cups of red wine. I'm using a Cabernet, but any red wine will do. Pinot Noir, just the least expensive bottle that you would drink. Now this is important. It just wouldn't be an Irish stew without Guinness. The beer not only adds flavor, but color as well. It's okay if you don't like stout and don't normally buy it. Most stores are willing to sell you a single can. These are 16 ounces each and equal two cups of liquid. And here we have a little under two tablespoons of dried thyme. I'm also adding seven bay leaves. Some of those are very small. If yours are bigger, you can get away with just three or four. Next, add two tablespoons of tomato paste. I buy it in tubes for recipes like this, so there's no waste. Add two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. And finally, add two tablespoons of sugar and give it all a mix. At this point, don't add any salt and pepper. Reserve that for the end, because the type of broth or bouillon that you use will determine how much salt is already in the pot. Cover and simmer this for one and a half hours. And while that's simmering, we'll get started with the veggies. All right, so now it's time to do the veggies, right? Okay, so we have a half a pound of onion. Now, bear in mind the weights I'm using are after the vegetables were peeled. And for the onion, you just want to cut this coarsely because we're not making a sauce, we're making a, a stew. We actually want chunks of onion in there, right? So that's basically one and a half pounds of onion. Okay? I won't spend too much time on this. I'll put that aside. And then the carrots, I have one and a half pounds of carrots. And we want to cut those into decent bite-sized pieces, as you see. As you get to the thicker part, obviously you want to cut them a little bit thinner. Just like that. All right, and that's one and a half pounds of carrots. And then the potatoes, again, three pounds of potatoes, and basically you want to cut them, again, into decent-sized chunks, just 
just like that. You see? About that size. So we're back at the stove, okay? And what we're gonna do here is I've taken this non-stick skillet and I've added knob of butter, like a tablespoon or so. Okay, and all I want to do is very quickly saute the onions and the carrots. Now don't worry about all the butter and oil and stuff that we used. We'll be skimming off a lot of that fat uh, at the end of making this stew, so don't worry about it, but this butter does give the stew a delicious flavor. And really the main reason for doing this is for a different reason than the potatoes, all right? But we just want to sweat the onions a little bit before we throw them in the pot. And remember, carrots take longer to cook than potatoes. So we're doing this first. Okay. And we'll give this a few minutes. Get it all started. And I'll be right back. I've been sauteing this for about three minutes. Okay. And I'm very happy with that. This is over a medium high heat. And we're going to immediately put that into the stew pot, which is sitting on the back burner. And then we're adding another knob of butter and we're going to saute the potatoes. And the reason why we're sauteing the potatoes is to allow them to develop a little bit of a crust and be coated with that butter so that they don't fall apart in the stew. That's why this is a very important part of the recipe. Please don't skip it. And go ahead, over medium-high heat, continue to saute these for about three to four minutes before adding them to the stew pot. So it's been about four minutes, and these potatoes are beginning to develop a nice crust. You can see some almost burnt edges on them, but they're not really burnt. Okay, and now that that's done, we're gonna take this stew pot, move it back to that burner to finish. And we will pour these potatoes in. Okay, look at that, huh? Now you see these, these bay leaves, as you run across them, pull them out. Give this a good stir. And you might have said at some point, gee, Dave, that's an awful lot of meat for the amount of vegetables. But it's not. It's not because that meat really, really shrinks a lot when you cook it. That was a huge piece. That's practically half the size it was when, it, when I started. So, all right. So let's do some math. And again, keep looking out for those bay leaves. They are in there, and you don't want to bite into one of those that tough as nails, right? Okay. All right, so let's do some math. We put in four cups of beef broth from a container. We put in two cups of wine, and we put in two cups of beer. So that's eight cups. So now what we want to do is just top this off. Oop, there's another one of those. Oop, oh, we got away. Now just keep an eye out for them, okay? So here goes another two cups of hot water. And it looks like we can fit another two cups. So we have that two more cups. Look at that. Oh, we're really pushing it, aren't we? Okay. So with four more cups of liquid, you want four teaspoons of this granulated beef bullion. Okay, and just mix that right in. And at this point, you want to turn the heat way down and simmer this until those vegetables are done. We're gonna check these for doneness. The carrots are cooked, the potatoes are cooked, and of course the meat is nice and tender, okay? So we're going to do 
couple of things. First of all, I took some of that liquid out earlier to see this, if you can see that fat, okay? It's not that it's bad fat necessarily, but it is some butter fat in there and some olive oil. So basically I'm going to skim off a good amount of that. I'm just gonna put it off into a little plate. And then here I have the same thing. I have, I let this cool down so that the fat would rise to the top. And I'm going to finish skimming off as much of that as I can. I don't wanna get rid of it all. I mean, this stuff actually adds a lot of flavor to the, to the stew, but uh, if you're being health conscious or whatever, it's, it's a good idea to get most of that out. Okay, so that's about a, the right amount of fat for a pot of stew this size. And what I'm gonna do next so I'm gonna make some dumplings on the side. So I'm gonna remove some of this liquid and make a little more broth and I'm gonna make them on the side. So don't go away. So to make the dumplings, I'm gonna take two cups of self-rising flour. I'm using this because I couldn't find my baking powder. So I'm gonna go ahead and use this. It already has the baking powder and salt in it, okay? And we're going to add two tablespoons of vegetable oil. In this case, I'm using canola, it looks like. That'll work. That's one. And two. Roughly. And one cup of warm water. I'll just... Combine all of that. Ooh, look at this, it's gonna make a mess. But that's okay. Maybe the flour was too dry. I don't know, all we really do is we drop these into boiling broth, right? Okay, so we will prepare a pan with some extra broth, which I have made. And then we will also grab about an equal amount of this stuff, broth from the stew. That's just under two cups. All right, and then I will fish out the carrots because we don't need them in here. We're just using this broth to cook these dumplings. And I think what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna make small dumplings, not, not large ones, so that like they can get fully submerged in the liquid here. All right, so now to make the dumplings, we're going to take spoonfuls like this and we're gonna put it into that boiling broth, okay? I'm gonna, we're gonna set them up in a single layer, just like so. We have to work quickly because we need to cover this pan. Okay, and just pack them down a little bit. We're gonna be making mini dumplings. They're not gonna be big. Okay, and these things, these are my wife's favorite. I'm doing this for her more than myself because this recipe originally did not call for dumplings, but she likes them. And I gotta admit, I like them too. So it's been added to the to the recipe as a side dish. That's the reason why we make the extra broth, but we include some of the original broth from the stew itself. All right. So these dumplings have been steaming for 15 minutes in that gravy. And that broth, okay, as you can see, I'm gonna turn that heat off. As you can see, it's actually created a gravy. Look at that, huh? And that's the main reason why I don't put it in here because I don't want to change the stew itself. So I make them on the side. You can always add some of that juice to your bowl. I'm gonna show you how that works. So, here we go. The proof of the pudding. Okay, we're gonna 
give yourself a good scoop of that, that beef stew. And see, everybody thought it was gonna be too much meat. <laughs> it shrunk, it stuff shrinks a lot. And then on top of that, you grab yourself a dumpling or two. Okay. And if you want, a little bit of that, that gravy that develops, that'll help to thicken up the stew in your plate. And there you have it. This is a very good, delicious, heartwarming stew with dumplings made with wine and Guinness. Life doesn't get much better than that, folks. So here you go.